Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors coming to you with Life Talk Topics. This is part of my Life Rebound and Recovery series. Life Talk Topics are usually helpful for anyone who has been in a setback and is on their way to overcoming a setback. The topic will help you to gauge where you are in your understanding, as well as help you to plan your way out of setback, which involves uh, you understanding your own contribution and the contribution of others. So take some time to listen to this Life Talk topic. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I will respond. In addition, I usually leave some sort of link in the description box. Uh, also, subscribe to the channel as well as hit, hit the notification button if you are interested in further topics. Um, thank you very much for visiting my channel and I hope you uh, are able to gain some insight from this Life Talk topic. All right, so one reason why people are angry is they they have ignored an instruction. Uh, they have, they tend to struggle with respect for authority. All the people that, that are in jail or in prison right now struggle with authority, struggle with um, uh, obeying an instruction. You cannot advance in life without obeying an instruction. If you think about the platoon, le uh, platoon leader of an army, navy, air force, or whatever, uh, when that platoon leader says forward march, if you don't march, you're going to stay in that one place. That means that the longer you stay, the more you become stagnant. You have to obey that instruction to advance. So he says forward march and you march. He says right flank march and you right flank march and so on. But you are advancing as you obey the instruction. People don't like to um, respond to the word obey. They feel like um, they are, um, you know, like a little child again, and they don't want to, to experience those feelings. But in life, all of us have to deal with instruction. All of us have to deal with authority. We all have a boss. And even if you had your own company, you still have a boss. You have local, state, federal, national, international regulations that you still have to adhere to. You have tax code, uh, legal concepts, contract law. So you are never completely without authority. So people are often angry. And I put this as, as the very first reason because it has a lot to do with them ignoring an instruction. And when you ignore an instruction, you will see the consequences and the result way down the path. I mean, it could it can be as soon as you you know disobey that instruction, um, and then if you receive consequences or experience consequences, that is a time for reflection. Okay, reflect on it. But if you don't reflect on it and you push against that and you continue to you know develop yourself into um, into disobeying instruction, you will experience those con uh, those uh, consequences. That's why you see people who are who are in jail, people who are in prison, people who lose their jobs. You don't just lose your job just to lose your job. There's a reason behind why you lost that job. Uh, lose marriages, uh, whatever type of loss it is, it is usually tied to some sort of instruction that you ignored. The way that you resolve that problem is to go back to that last instruction that you ignored and resolve it. Then you can move forward. Just because you are making a lot of money, just because it looks like you're doing well, if that's the case, you shouldn't be angry. Why are you angry? No, a lot of times you just may be on a path that you are, are working and it's, it is producing uh, in terms of money and status and material resources. But somewhere you are angry because of some sort of instruction you ignored.
All right. Why people are angry. They are in a place they are not supposed to be. So they're struggling with being out of order. You know, you have to be careful about getting ahead of yourself. You know, you can have great ideas and you can have the money and, and material resources to uh, bring those ideas to pass. But sometimes you can do it uh, when it is not your season. And people don't want to hear that because they don't like to wait. They 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 want to pursue uh, hastiness. That's why I wrote Bait Hook and Switch Confessions of a Rebound Girl because all throughout that first part, I talk about my hastiness, how I lived life on 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 the fuel of hastiness, and so uh, it brought me a lot of pain, a lot of consequences. Um, I procrastinated in a whole lot of different areas. I didn't get a lot accomplished. Now, I did go to school and I did complete school. But even then, um, I was hasty in, you know, certain areas. And so uh, pay attention to uh, being out of order, that there is an ordering to life. There's an ordering to things, that there's a step-by-step -step and you have to do the steps and either you're going to do the steps in your 20s and get to your 30s and begin thriving or you're going to keep missing the steps in your 20s, your 30s and your 40s and your 50s and you get to 60 and it's hard to go back and resolve those issues. You want to you want to live a life of thriving. You don't want to live a life of being in anger and being out of order and being in places you're not supposed to be. Many people have died, been killed because they were in places they were not supposed to be. If you are a woman who is going after somebody else's husband, that is a place in life you are not supposed to be. There are going to be consequences, um, you know, for that action. That um, um, you are trying to position yourself in the place of wife, and you are not a wife. You're trying to get the benefits of what a wife would get, but you are not a wife. Same thing with a man trying to go after uh, his friend's uh, wife or, or, or girlfriend. That's a place you are not supposed to be. You cannot touch something that does not belong to you. That even though the thing might belong to you later, it doesn't belong to you now. You know, I wrote the book um and finished it somewhere in uh 2015 to 2016 but i waited to actually uh self-publish i went on ahead and copyrighted it in 2000, uh, 2016 but i still had residual issues with my past relationship my past rebound relationship and so in some ways i might have been out of order because even though it's a good idea and a good book and, and I finished it, I wasn't ready. And in some ways it wasn't ready um, to be revealed. So then what if it had, you know, taken off and people loved it and all that kind of stuff, it would have propelled me too fast. It would have put me in a position too fast. And there was a lot that I learned between 2016 and 2019 now. Uh, it's a lot that I learned about myself that I didn't know about. And so it was it's, it was important to wait those three years. So people who who are angry tend to be the types of people who are uh, who are in places they are not supposed to be. They are out of order. They are frustrated with lack, so struggling with just enough. We all in some ways we all live with you know, just enough. I think sometimes the billionaire also, I mean, don't always look at the, the, the financial aspect of the billionaire. There may be some, you know, just enough issues that they struggle with, that they're frustrated with. They're not going to tell you because the assumption is, well, you got everything. Why are you uh, upset? Why, uh, why don't you, uh, you, you got that big mansion and that big money and things like that, but you still see some anger in them. And it's something that they have to think about themselves. I mean, you cannot solve the problem for them, but it is kind of interesting that they can have the world 
at their fingertips, but somehow they are still angry. So they would have to determine what the just enough is. What are they living with? Where where have they settled? What do they lack? Because you you don't always have to put everything on a money level. You could lack. Uh, and I'll talk about this in a few more slides, you can lack the knowledge to push you forward. You know, if you are an entrepreneur, a business person, and you're still making $20, I mean, $20 million, uh, uh, and you've been in business for 10 years, somewhere you're not growing. You are stagnant. It's $20 million, but it's not. you're not moving up or advancing, so there could be lack. There could be lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of capital. You know, you're basically breaking even every every time. There may be some profit, you know, that you get to in order for you to live and everything. But uh, you shouldn't be angry then if you're making $20 million a, um, um, a year for 10 years. So, well, people are angry because they are frustrated with lack. They, they struggle with just enough. So there is a gap in their knowledge base. So there's a struggle with ignorance. So, you know, with um, people, you know, sometimes they leave learning at the schoolhouse. I learned all I needed to know from K through 12, right? But as I talk to my students, I tell them that there is a knowledge base that you are working with. That's everything that you learn from and in the house as a child all the way to graduation of high school. Now, where are you going to take yourself? Where are you going to take your mind? Do you even know what, what your gifts and talents are, right? At least discover them because then you can begin developing them. Uh, but a lot of times people are angry because they lack knowledge. There is a gap in their knowledge base. And when you don't add to yourself, you find yourself taking anything. The same thing I tell students all the time. And it, it was a gap in my knowledge base that uh, planning for transition is important. That in high school, you have those last two years to plan for transition, either, either to go to the university or to the community college or to go and work for um, you know, a job full time. And I tell my students in the uh, community college uh, environment that you're not here just to do your basics, even though even though that's what you're actually doing, that you are here because that's two years of planning and that I lacked the knowledge of what it meant to plan, to, um, to uh, plan transition. Sure, I carried... Uh, a planner with me in high school, but I didn't have enough uh, uh, sense. I was ignorant in the area of planning my transition out of high school. So then I moved that lack of knowledge to college. When I graduated uh, with my master's degree, I still didn't have a plan. I knew from the bachelor's degree that I needed to go on ahead and get the master's degree in order to teach at the community college level. So I knew enough of that right to understand that but eventually I was going to graduate and I did not plan and when you don't plan you find yourself taking anything and so you may get into this job it doesn't work out um, I had to uproot myself uh, because I lost my job in San Diego moved back to Dallas um, uh, I just didn't have any real transition planning knowledge so um, and I let that ignorance continue that if you are ignorant in something, you can be ignorant in something the first time. But if you are ignorant in something second, third, fourth, fifth, you are perpetuating ignorance. You are allowing it to continue because we got all of these libraries. We got the whole Internet. We got books. We got people who can mentor us. There is no need for you to be ignorant. Uh, life, I mean, uh, um, access to knowledge is um, not costly at all. It's really free. So uh, usually people are angry because there is a gap in their knowledge base and they are struggling with ignorance. All right, they are impatient with the process, so they don't have a respect for timing. Everything is timing. You know, think about the 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 cake 
you make in the oven. You know, there was a process to baking, a pre-process to baking. You had to get the eggs and the and the cake mix and anything else you needed to put in it, milk or whatever. And you had that process of stirring it and, and, and you know, getting out the lumps. Then you have, have the process of, of uh, putting the flour at the bottom of the pan, right? You know, so the cake won't stick. Then you have the process of spreading the cake uh, in the pan. And then, the, of course, the process of putting the cake in the oven and turning the oven on, things like that. And so uh, we look at the cake in the oven and we look at how it's, you know, browning at the top and on the sides. And we think, oh, it's done. But like your mama said, your nana said, your grandmama said, your big mama said, uh, they always say, stick a fork in it, right? Stick a fork in it. You stick a fork in it, you stick it in the middle, and you notice that there's still cake batters. So that even though the sides and the top tend to brown, the, the middle is not complete, is not finished, is not fully, fully baked. Well, process in anything that you do works the same way. Now, just because you have a gift and talent doesn't mean that you don't need college. You need to place that gift and talent within a college context so that you can develop it, so that it can be developed, so you can know what your gaps are, know how to you know, develop it as a skill as well, know how to advance it forward, get mentoring on it. People don't like the time. That's why you hear people say, I'm not, you know, college is not for me. College is for you. All college is, is reading and writing and testing. It's really actually the most simple thing that you can do apart from being an adult and having to work out your adult life, keeping a job, paying bills, things like that. That's all actually harder. Going to college is easier. So people tend to be impatient with the process. They get ahead of themselves. They don't like timing. They don't respect timing. And then they get mad when things don't come out uh, well in the way that they thought it should. If you take that cake out before it is done, before it is complete, you're going to taste the top and the size as being complete, but that, that middle is going to taste horrible. So <clears throat> you don't want a person... You don't want your gift and talent or yourself to come out horribly. You don't want... So you go into these um, arenas, these areas, and you think you are fully baked. But you haven't worked out the anger issues that you have. <coughs> you haven't worked out a lot of the anger issues that you have. And that goes also with your, with your gift and talent. That's part of your process. So take some time to do that. People are often angry also because they are stretched too thin. They have problems with setting boundaries. You know, I used to be a people pleaser. And um, and I learned, I, I began to challenge my people pleasing while I was in college. It's just something that came to me. It's just the most interesting interesting thing that I was walking on my college campus. I went to San Diego State University and something about the words people pleasing came to me and I could have ignored it at that time but I but you could not I could not ignore something that that was true and so I used to, you know, volunteer my time, raise my hand and say, oh, sure, I'll do it for you here. Here, no problem. But then I wouldn't get out my studies. I wouldn't do what I needed to do for myself. So I was stretching myself too thin and then I would get myself upset. I would be upset as a result. And then somehow that that upsetness or that anger turned into resentment, uh, into resentment. So I, I resented the idea that the person was was asking me to do certain things. What I should have resented, however, is me volunteering myself to do certain things. So setting boundaries. Uh, 
um, became an objective a lot later, but the people pleasing was something that I had to address. And that took some time. That's not something that, that, that could be resolved, uh, in a very short amount of time that took some time. And then later in my, uh, middle thirties to late thirties, I began learning how to set boundaries. And it isn't until now in my forties that I have learned how to set no, uh, uh, to, uh, to say no. I will not let you stretch me too thin today. I got too much going on. I got to teach. I got to make sure that I keep my mind ready for it, prepared for it. I got the projects that I'm doing right now with the books and the audios. Uh, and and <clears throat> I don't give my number out. Not right now. Right now I'm in solitude. So that took a long time to use the word no without explanation. We also we always use no because, right? No, no, but I can't. No, no, I have learned to use actually the word no. Now, if you are mad, you're just mad. I know how to use no and walk off, or I know how to use no and sit there and let you be mad, but I'm not going to let you stretch me thin anymore because it was my fault that I let that person stretch me thin. And it's not so much that the person, I let, I, I, uh, I let the person stretch me thin, I stretched myself thin. I did not set the boundaries. We need to begin using more of the personal I because if you use the personal I, it is your way of taking responsibility. And the more you do that, the more you see the other person trying to um, 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 take your responsibility or take over you. So people are often angry because they are too, they are stretched too thin and they have not learned how to set boundaries. Uh, they are loyal when they should be stern. So it's the people pleasing uh, um, thing I just talked about. You know, being stern with someone, it, it makes you look like you are um, being mean. You are being like an authoritative figure or whatever. But you are the authoritative figure over yourself that you manage you you tell you what you need to do and so there needs to be some loyalty to yourself i'm not saying being selfish in some ways you can be selfish i take that back some ways you can be a little bit selfish but not to the point of narcissism or something like that right but um um you have to know what your schedule is. You have to know what you can take. You have to know the boundaries that you set. You need to really begin thinking about how to set boundaries with yourself because you are your own worst enemy, not all of the people outside of you. And so uh, we are oftentimes loyal when we should be stern. Um, you know, you hear people all the time say, you know, I'm loyal to a fault. Well, that's a problem. You should not be loyal to a fault because that fault could end up in death. It could end up in you being destroyed in some way, having to go to prison, having to go to jail. You have many people who are part of gangs and prison life and everything. They're just loyal to a fault. They don't know how to tell that person what they need to tell that person. And people pleasing is a dangerous state to remain in. I had to begin addressing it once it was revealed to me. No one revealed it to me. My mind revealed it to me. My heart revealed it to me. The Lord revealed it to me. And once I understood that, that was kind of like the first step towards um, moving uh, in, in a better direction. They do what they know. They struggle with convenience. So people are often angry. You know, um, if you did not look at yourself in comparison to others, you may not be angry. But um, sometimes when people compare themselves to others, that's a lot of times where the anger might come in. But doing what you know is, I don't want to say boring, but it is more taxing 
to do what you know, to do what's convenient than to do something that is inconvenient. Because you got to manage yourself, right? And you manage yourself with what you only know. And that can be that can have just as much uh, responsibility as if you had to take on new knowledge. So struggling with convenience is something that you got to live with. And I believe that affects you just as much as any other type of stress that you bring into your life. So you need to know more than what you know. Uh, I'm not saying you need to go in and, and, and become an expert if it's not part of your career or whatever field. Uh, but you, but it is important that you pick up a book and read or that you look at, you know, news or, or you begin to think about a world view that you might want to adopt. What are, you know, some of your views on particular political issues, things like that. You know, it's important to, to, uh, engage in conversation. The soul needs conversation. And so if you only know certain things, it is hard for you to participate with other people who might know more. So do think about uh, what you know and what you could know. They are dreamers, but not doers. So people love to struggle with um, fantasy. You know, they like the idea of seeing themselves being an entrepreneur. They like the idea of seeing themselves, you know, visualizing themselves in, uh, in um, you know, Brooks Brothers suit or, you know, fancy shoes, fancy um, uh, purses, fancy clothes, right? And they like to visualize themselves commanding a room. But you would never see the dreamer sit down with pen and pad and paper and plan out the dream write the vision down. They can dream and dream and dream and dream, but they are not going to do anything. And I really, you know, sympathize with people like that because a lot of times people, what they struggle with, they struggle with telling themselves what to do. See, on the job, you have rules and regulations. You are required to clock in, work your shift, and then clock out, right? And you have a supervisor who who gives you instructions to do this, do that, or whatever. And then you do it. You respond. You obey uh, instructions and rules. And then you leave. Okay, well, people don't know. People who are dreamers but not doers struggle with supervising themselves. See, when you are a dreamer and you want to turn that dream into some sort of uh, uh, company, movement, foundation, or whatever, that requires you to do something. That requires you to adopt a work ethic. That requires you to manage yourself, to manage the people up under you as well. And so they will struggle with fantasizing because it's easier to fantasizing, uh, easier to uh, fantasize telling somebody what to do than to actually be a dreamer to plan out what that person needs to do. Then when they, they decide not to pursue it with activity, with doing something, with writing the vision down, you see them exercising their anger around immediate family members or immediate friendships. And they can't, and they don't understand why they are so angry, but they like to talk about all the ideals in their heart, but they're not going to do anything. And every time somebody says, okay, do you have a business plan? Have you researched this? Why I got to research this or whatever. I just want to do it. What's wrong with me? You don't think I can do it? That's not what the person is saying. The person is saying that the dream is, it, it still needs to be planned out. Like you have people who are dreamers, they want to be rich. They just want to be rich. They don't want to do anything that's going to create an opportunity for them to become rich. They just want to be rich. And you got to watch out for people like that because they are not really workers. Just because they have a job and they have stayed on that job for 10, 15, 20, 25 years does not necessarily mean that they are workers. They just cannot go and live with somebody else. Their, their uh, family members have, have basically told them that they cannot come and live with them, right? So they keep a job, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are workers. 
Because if you feel like you got to, you want to be rich, but you don't want to do anything to be rich, that means you're not really a worker. So people, uh, people are angry because they are dreamers, but not doers. They struggle with fantasy. All right, they do not rest, so they struggle with quantity over quality. So I've, I've, also, I've also had this problem in my past. I have learned better today to rest. I would do my work. I would do with the stuff that I need to do, but I am very good at resting. You know, I think about Senator John McCain. He died, right? He had uh, cancer multiple times, and then this last go around, he had surgery. And um, instead of resting, he showed up on the Senate floor when they were voting for the health care to remove um, Obama care or whatever. And, um, but he should have been resting. Well, when, um, who was it? When um, Obama gave his eulogy, he said about John McCain, the man who would not rest is put to rest today. And I thought that was so interesting. He might have thought, for, he, he uh, Obama might have used it from a very positive standpoint that he was a, a man who who uh, just would not rest until something was done, a deal was done, right? But I look at it from a psychological or personal context that, um, that he would probably still be here today had he rested after this last surgery. His mother is still alive and in her hundreds. She's like 102 or three or something like that. So you know that family um, uh, has, um, you know, can last all the way to about 100, right? And he died in his 80s, I think. And so um, he struggled more with quantity over quality. You know, it might have been better for him to just let the health care situation go and stay in Arizona, Sedona, Arizona, and just rest. So that when you give time to rest, you are better able to make smarter decisions. And when you don't rest, you see that anger coming out. And the anger you think is always at the other person, but it's really with you. And a lot of times we're trying to compensate for something when we don't rest. Maybe we fell short in one area and so now we're trying to catch up and do all that we can, you know, that quantity-based thinking, all that we can to make it right. But sometimes you may need to make peace with the fact that you did not do everything well in your past and that going forward, you need to choose quality over quantity. So people are angry also because they do not rest. And a lot of times it has, has to do with compensating in an area that they fell short. People are angry because they fight the wrong battles. They struggle with choice. Not every battle you're supposed to fight. Let me say that again. Not every battle you're supposed to fight. If you fight every battle, you would be dead, right? There are some battles that you need to fight with yourself before you go and fight battles with other people. Because with other people, you don't know them fully. I don't care how much time you spend with somebody, you still don't know them fully. You don't know their lack some people are lack the courage to fight their own battles. That's why it's much easier to get you to try to do it. And when you find somebody trying to pull at you to fight their battle, that is a sign that they have that they struggle with choice and priority. They have not made themselves a priority. They have not made their lives a priority. So if they have not made their lives a priority, why are you giving your life over to them? That's essentially what you're doing when you fight their battles. Their life is the wrong battle for you. So that means you need to adopt a choice. That choice needs to be you. You got tons of things going on with you that need resolve, that need resolution. I'm not saying that there may not that there may be times that you might have to help them, but you have to set boundaries, right? Of course, but you need to make 
living out your life and reconciling all of your um, all of your choices and decisions and the battles that you have to fight. You need to make that a choice because you need energy. You need energy to fight those battles. And if you are running yourself down trying to fight everybody's battles, you're not going to have the energy that you need to fight your own. So choose. So here's your writing test after going all uh, through all of the reasons why people might be angry. Um, I want you to think about um, what this means for you in terms of completion. So journal why you may be angry. Does your anger have anything to do with something you have not completed? What is your plan for resolving anger? And that's important because a lot of times we are angry um, a lot of times because we haven't completed something. That's what I said, that the instruction is, as the very first slide, um, that people struggle with instruction, you know, they don't have any regard for it. That means you haven't completed your response to the instruction. So everything going down your path all the way down is not going to be right. And it's going to look like you are out of order. It's going to look like you are resolving, you know, battles that don't belong to you. So go back to areas where you feel like you have not completed. That might be school. For me, my new, my area where I have not completed is in, um, is in finances. Yet I started out um, on a good foot in 94, 95, and then I interrupted myself by bringing on distractions and then moving to San Diego. And then I ended up incurring more debt uh, as a result. Had I just stayed in Dallas and resolved that issue first with finance, I was so close to paying off my debt. I had about two or three credit cards that I was finishing and, and, and I didn't complete it. So now in my forties, I still have to complete financial, um, financial literacy. If you think about it like that, so that I can move towards thrive because thrive is wellness in all areas of your life, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, uh, spiritually, you know, financially, right? This, uh, that's truly what Thrive is. So that means if I'm saying the word wellness, that I'm really in pursuit of wellness, that means that, that I am ill somewhere. And so I am ill in the area of finance. That's what my new task is, okay? So journal why you may be angry. Does your anger have anything to do with something you have not completed? What is your plan for resolving anger? All right, so hopefully you were able to gain insight from this video discussion. Please like, subscribe, and visit. So uh, please like the video, hit, hit the notification bell for more discussions. I am re-uploading all of my audios, uh, so I, I needed to make some changes to them. Uh, you can visit my web, my website for more content at reginawhyfavors.com. If you want to send me an email, you can send an email reginawhyfavors at yahoo.com. Please also purchase the book. It's going to come out in spring 2021. That's so why I had to make changes um, to my book to update it. And I also updated, updated the title. So the original title was Bait, Hook, and Switch. Confessions of a Rebound Girl, and I have updated the title to Toxic Encounters, Why People Pursue Rebound Relationships. So right now I'm still basically editing it, and I want to make it available in spring 2021. So thank you very much for visiting my channel, and I am Regina Y. Favors. Have a great day.